Hey everybody, it's Pete. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Today is Monday morning, August 3rd, 2020. Congratulations to everybody who attended last week's live training and is now a proud member of the boot camp. I'm very excited for you. Normally August is a little bit slower, but that's absolutely not going to happen this month. We actually have everybody's home. Nobody's away uh, trying to get away for the year for uh, before Labor Day. So you made a great decision joining us. It's going to be an amazing, amazing 30 days together. Super excited because um, we have volatility. We still have earnings season here and we're going to have volume, which is really a big part of um, making money, which is actually what I want to talk about today. Today, we're going to talk about swing trading and specifically uh, which stocks to swing trade. And what I mean by that is which stocks have opportunity, how to enter those swing trades uh, and which stocks to avoid. And I think that a big part of joining the boot camp. Uh, especially for somebody who's kind of new to the market, a little bit overwhelmed, um, not really 100% sure what they want to do, but absolutely know that they want to be involved, that they want to trade, they want to make some extra cash flow. That's a big part of what the boot camp is all about, really fully understanding what you're looking at and then being smart, being an informed trader who understands which trades have high probability of paying you <clears throat> versus which trades have a high probability of sucking your money dry. <laughs> and we're actually going to give two examples here. I want to talk very clearly, though, about active stocks. I spend a lot of time talking about, uh, and I covered this in the training last week, I spend a lot of time um, discussing, uh, you, it's very hard to make consistent money. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about making money month after month after month in stocks that only move once in a while, in stocks that only have explosions once in a while, you have to really um, be, on, uh, you have to be in those stocks almost before they explode, which is very hard to do. I had somebody email me over the weekend asking, how do we find the, how do we find the, the stocks that are going to move before the smart money gets in them? Quite honestly, you don't need to. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people out there talking about find the, you know, here's the trade before it explodes. Um, our job that gets easier and easier and easier when you get good at identifying order flow because that means that there's already buying in it and we just piggyback on the back of the smart money. You don't need to, to have these secret indicators or anything like that. You just need to say, wow, that's obvious. I, I want to get on board. That's what order flow is. Order flow is not catching the bottom. It's not catching the top. It's waiting for the market to say, here we go, find a spot to get in. And that's what we're going to talk about today. With, um, with identifying swing trade entries. There seems to be some confusion, both about timing uh, and actually entering swing trades. Now, when I say timing, it actually, Chad, in the, a new member of the bootcamp, brought this up the other day about uh, when you get in and that kind of stuff and fully understanding. When I mention levels, I'm, talking, I'm, I'm actually identifying a level where the risk reward makes sense. So if we go back to prior to even me saying a level, that means we've already identified a trade that has order flow in it and profit potential. But having profit potential now versus how far it can move is not the same thing. So you might hear me say, I love this trade long. I'll day trade it up until that level. And then it becomes a swing trade above that level because there might not be enough profit potential to justify the trade, but I could day trade it for one day maybe even start to build a swing trade position. So I have my, my risk profile lower. I don't have as many shares, but if it gets above that situation where the reward potential now increases, that expands the profit potential and you can hang on to that trade a little bit longer. By the way, two things. Um, if you find these videos helpful, definitely click down and subscribe because you'll get updates and obviously get the stock picks as well as some education. Uh, and I'll also leave the link below for the... Um, for the free training that I had last week. You can just watch the video now and you can see everything that's in there. Uh, so we're gonna start out with, we're gonna cover two stocks. We're gonna cover Etsy and we're gonna cover Roku because I think that they both offer some really good um, lessons, uh, quite honestly. And it'll hopefully keep you out of trades um, that, quite are, that just don't make sense where you might be looking to get involved with them, uh, but the idea uh, just doesn't have profit potential. And, um, one of them will chew you up <laughs> and the other one actually had some opportunity, but you had to work the order a little bit. And that seems to be a question that I get quite a bit as well. What does it mean to work the order? So we're actually going to go over to those two charts um, and walk through those trade ideas.
So Etsy, I'm not going to get into the to the details of order flow, but let's just let's just assume that Etsy is a buying opportunity here, which you can clearly see since the March lows, uh, it's actually been in a really solid, clean uptrend. But we're going to talk about last week, and specifically, this is Friday for the prior week, and this is last week's trading. And a lot of people are saying, how do I get involved in some of these stocks that are the stay-at-home stocks, and what is the right swing trading idea? Because Pete, I can't sit at my screen all day. I get it. Most people can't be day trading all day. Quite honestly, if you have another full-time job, you probably shouldn't <laughs> unless you're at home right now. And that's the big thing too. Being in the boot camp accelerates the amount of ideas that you can trade. That's a big part of it. It's the same setups. It's the same patterns, the same entry signals. On the day trading over the next 30 days, you just get a lot more of them. So you, you kind of accelerate how fast you can learn, even if you're not day trading. Anyway, in this instance over here, we were actually looking during this pullback, which by the way, this, this highlights again the fact that you need to be trading stocks that are active. Um, the stock actually made new highs here and pulled back. And this is actually kind of what you're looking for. You're either trading a breakout to new highs or you're trading a pullback. Uh, either one of those sets up a good profit potential because a breakout to new highs obviously has room to go. Uh, but then a pullback sets up a good trade where you're, you're, you're looking at a stock that's already strong, identifying a spot where now you have an exact profit target up here that moves further away. So that kind of increases the profit potential. So if you're looking at the chart here, it pulled back. So this area here would technically be your profit target. So you have, a, you have a couple of choices here. On this pullback, you'd be looking to get long and looking for it to retest this area. So now here's the part that a lot of active traders who happen to be sitting in front of their screen right now are, um, are uh, getting confused. There's, I'm sorry, there's really no other way to put it. If you're swing trading, you need to be trading on daily charts. You could be using hourly charts, and I in the boot camp, I discussed quite a bit working orders intraday to potentially set up further swing trades. Um, I'm going to discuss that briefly, what that means right now, but here's the key, and, and, and especially if you happen to be actively trading right now for the first time. If you're looking to hold the trade for the next five days, seven days, 10 days, whatever it happens to be, you should, be, you should not be letting a five-minute chart scare you out of a position that you really like. If you did all that work, you did all the homework, and you set up a trade, Stop watching five minute charts to say, my gosh, I really wanted this trade. And that one five minute candle shook me out of a trade that I should have made $30 on. Don't do that. If you are looking at the five minute charts, looking to build a position for a longer term trade, you still have to have your stop loss on the daily charts for a swing trade. I want to make that clear. You're not day trading a swing trading idea. You're using day trading entries to build a longer term position, but your stop loss would still be on the daily chart. The reason you would use your intraday entry signals is because it gives you a tighter area to find, look for that spot, it paused and look to build a position. But the bottom line is you should not be building that position unless the stock is moving in your favor. So you need a good profile of a profit. So in other words, every, every classic trading book says this going back a hundred years. Build a position as it moves in your favor. So if you put on a trade and it starts to move in your favor, it's okay. But if you plan on holding the trade for five days, you shouldn't be adding five minutes later. That's not sufficiently in your favor to start to build a position. So I just wanted to touch on that for a second. But anyway, we, we trade this. We're looking for this pullback. So now the this area here around 100, which is usually a very good spot to look for a buy around 100, we had a very good trade in SE a few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, that same exact setup happened. So in this case here, we'd be looking to bid 100 and looking for it to get back up into this area around 112, 113. So this technically right here is the entry. Because in this situation here, you end up trading above the previous day's high. And that's generally a swing trading entry signal above the previous day's high. And the stop loss is generally below the previous day's low. And you end up, what happens is, as the stock starts to move in your favor, you move your stop loss up. So you have your stop loss down here for your initial entry. Then you move it up to break even where you got into the trades. As it starts to move in your favor, you move it up to break even. Then as it starts to move further and further higher and closer to your profit target, you move up what's called the trailing stop. So you have three different stops. You have your initial stop loss, you have your break even stop loss, and then you have your profitable trailing stop loss. So in this situation here in Etsy, the whole point of this trade is looking for it to retest up here as a minimum profit target, at, at least, in a, let's call it an initial profit target. So you have really good buying pressure. It pulls back, 
pauses around 100. This signal right here is the entry because it trades above what we call this indecision candlestick. So now remember the thought process. Your stop loss would be down here below 100. Your profit target's up here. And now it starts to move in your favor, but you get a heavy reversal candle here. So here's the key. And this is where a lot of traders are struggling. When the stock starts to move in your favor, you now need to move your stop loss up to break even, which in this case is here right around, let's say 102, 103, just for argument's sake. Though. So right above the high of this level, the high of this day, 103.24 actually is the exact level. So it went up to 108 and change, but your target was up here. As it starts to pull back, if, if you went from stop loss to break even and it pulls back to your break even spot, you have to get out. You can't hold the trade waiting and waiting and waiting, hoping because it actually broke down here. You have no idea the stock's gonna turn around. The market didn't look great there. The stock broke support. This is technically a change of trend. You have to be a disciplined trader at this area here, which is probably right around this day here, you got in and out at the same price. You took a flat because you maybe commissions and you did the right thing as a trader, but you still like the trade. So now as the trade starts to move further and further along, you see that this breakdown, again, learning how to read the tape, the breakdown failed because the very next day, what happened? The very next day, the stock now went well bid, which as you know, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, it went well bid, but now you have a problem. You still like this target up here around 112, one, let's say 113, 114, but now the stock is in a trading range for two weeks. So now you have a decision. When do I get involved again? And when does the risk reward become worth it? See, now it's not the same entry down here at 103. Now you're looking at it needs to get out of this trading range around 107, 108. You get well bid. So what happens after well bid? Well, we said the entry is above here. The next candle never triggers an entry. It doesn't trade above that and you're still in this trading range. So now you have to decide, what do I do? Do I trade in this range or do I wait for it to get out of this range, looking for it to start building a position up to this level? Because don't forget, if it gets out of this range, now the profit potential has diminished because this area from here to here, which is essentially now 108 to 113, is not the same entry as all the way down here at 103. That's a big difference. So when you hear me say, I like it up here at these levels, that means I'm basically saying the reward potential now at that level expands. So down here to here is good reward. Up here to here is not the same reward. So you might end up risking a dollar to make a dollar. That's not a good trade. Or in this case, you might be risking $3 to make $3. That's a lower profit potential. So what we'd be talking about here now is this inside candlestick is another scenario. So now you have and let's actually just draw this out so it's kind of clear. You have a choice now. You have this trading range. Let me actually draw this, uh, put this up a little bit higher. You have this trading range and you have a trading range here on the bottom. And this failed, to, it failed, right? So let's actually walk through this trade. This is technically the range now, right? So if we were drawing a trend line, this is where the trend line, this is where the trend line broke. So we, we talk often about once a stock has found the right price, it needs to get out of that. So now here's technically the entry. The stock went well bid again and broke out of this range and closed above it, but your profit potential is here. So now we're talking about the close here at uh, 108.69 with the target being around 114. So you have roughly $6. So now you have a choice. You have a tra two choices to make here. <clears throat> As you know, when we talk about trading breakouts, breakouts don't have a great win-loss percentage. However, they do have a tremendous profit potential on those breakouts that follow through. So the trade here as a swing trade. Now, we already said that swing trading, your stop loss is generally below the previous candle's low. But in this case, it's a different situation because we're trading a breakout. The stop loss on a breakout is if it trades back into that breakout and closes there. The other side of that is what do we want to see when a breakout is succeeding? We want to see well bid, and we ended up seeing that. So we did not get stopped out on this entry. It actually went well bid, which is exactly what we want to see. And we knew this was our initial target. So now here's where the trade gets a little bit more advanced. If we know we're entering here and that's our potential profit target, we're basically looking at roughly $4. Now you have to say to yourself, how much would I need to risk 
to justify a trade for $4. Well, we already know that we're not gonna risk that much because here's the close and we would just look, if it closes back in that window, we're simply out. So the risk reward in this case is not down here, it's simply on a close back into that trading range. So think about what we just did. We changed the trade management based on the trade setup and the entry. Because now we're trading a breakout, we're not trading a break of the previous day's high. Very different, right? So now as it starts to move higher, now we have a decision between here and here. What is the reward potential? The reward potential is up to this level. Best case scenario, we have a good entry here that blows through the resistance, which is exactly what happened. And now we're managing a winning trade from down here where it closed around 108.69 to where it is now around 118. So we got back the same risk profile and profit potential that we had down here, but you had to wait through this. So hopefully you saw there that we didn't get involved until the stock took out the range and then set up a better profile where, I wanna get clear on this because this is important. Because the profit potential was limited here and the better trade or better reward potential is through this resistance, which is thankfully what we received on this trade, this entry with a potential low profit potential to here, which is not a big one, but a very big one if it could break through and go to all time highs, you have to trade less shares here up till this level, and then you would add as the position moves through here, you'd move your stop loss up from break even to trailing stop here, and now you have a trade that is basically a free trade where you had your original stop loss back below this level, you had your initial profit target up here, and now it keeps moving in your favor. So you can technically, as long as it stays above this breakout level around one four, one, let's just call it 114 for the sake of arguing. If it stays above 114, now you can add comfortably above there and now move your stop loss up to a level where you are now at the very least break even. But in this case, because it's now moved $10 in our favor, we probably want to lock in some of those gains and you would probably move it up to the 118, uh, 114, 115 level. I want to com compare that to um, Roku, which is a trade that a lot of us have been talking about. But we've been talking about it in a sense that there's nothing to do in the stock until it gets out of this window. So this is very similar to the trade that we looked at before where it's stuck in this window, although it didn't pull back as much, but it's stuck in this window. So there's really nothing to do here until it gets out the same way that we looked at the other trade in Etsy where there was something to do if it finally got out. Now, looking further, now we have to set up a new trade in Roku to where is the next profit potential and then wonder if that sets up a trade that matters. Does it? That's the question here. If we're basically looking at 168 as the level, what price would make sense so that we're risking enough that justifies the profit potential? When I say risking enough, we're not risking too much for, the, for a basically a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. So is this trade even valid if that's the most we can earn? So at what point does the trade become worth it? So right now we're looking, we have alert set in Roku at 158 and we can clearly see here around 168 is the profit target. So essentially what we're looking at here is there's nothing to do in Roku until it clears 168, very similar to what we just looked at in Etsy, it has to stay above that level and then the next candle has to go well bid as well. So that would give us our entry. So if we break above 168, stay above 168, that above 168 is the next target looking at 178 as the profit target. And then if it trades and closes back below that candle where it broke out, that's where you'd pull the trigger and get out of the trade as a stop loss. So you see breakout entries are very different than trading a pullback where there's momentum and you're, and you're looking for the next target. We actually just walked through two different scenarios. Swing trading is a very different animal than uh, anything else that you're doing because you're essentially using the daily candlesticks to set up your trades but you have to really set up the reward potential inside of those trades to say, okay, if, if I'm looking to make $10, what would I justify as being the risk for that trade in exchange for making that $10? And how do I build that position up to that $10? It's not as simple as A plus B equals C, but it's very simple when you're putting the pieces together. And that's the whole point of us working together. The whole point of us working together is staying away from trades like Roku until they prove themselves staying out of trades like Etsy until they prove themselves and then fully knowing how you're going to manage that trade after you get in it, if you even decide to get in it. There's a lot of trades that 
Um, we seem to be newer traders coming into the community have a problem with trading breakout trades and wondering why they seem to always pick the breakouts that fail. Well, I have news for you. Most breakouts fail. <laughs> the reward potential for one breakout that follows through in exchange for the few that don't follow through, you just have to be, you have to be a professional and take your losses if they don't follow through. And here's the key though, and I mentioned this in the, in the webinar that we did last week, and make sure you click down and watch that webinar. The bottom line is this, if you want to make bigger money and take advantage of what the market has to offer, you have to be okay with the uncertainty of which trades that don't follow through. But here's the lesson. It's okay to take losses. What's not okay is having a $20 trade and making three. You have to take the next step and fully understand which trades should follow through, which trades do follow through, and how to manage those winning trades. It's actually your winning trades that are hurting your profit and loss statement because you haven't figured out yet how to hold on to the good winners. And that, that's really, that's what separates chart reading from trader is actually getting paid on those big winners. So I understand what I covered today is a lot of detail, but you want to know something? That's what you want. You don't want somebody to say, it's easy. I have the super secret thing you don't have right now. What you need to learn is how to put these pieces together. What you need to learn is how to, how to read the order flow and put the trade together in a way that if you make money, you make what you're supposed to. If you don't make money, you lose what you're supposed to. And then when you get a few winners that take off, like in the whole Etsy situation that we just talked about, first trade, we actually got involved. We had our target, it pulled back, it broke even. Second trade set up in a good trade that we still liked broke out, closed above that level, never came back, and now it's a, it's a profitable trade. The Roku trade has not even entered yet. It didn't even set up a signal yet. Two different scenarios, three trades in two stocks, and really something to, to uh, watch this video more than once. If you have any questions, leave a link, uh, leave a comment below the video. I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, if you've had some wins based on stuff we called out too, I'd love to see that feedback as well. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel and definitely watch that video replay from last week. Have a great day.